Hi friends, uh, welcome to you, my YouTube channel. In this video, we will see remaining questions of DFT introduction, introduction interview questions. First, we will see uh, DFT is front end or back end. DFT is comes under both front end and back end. Why? So, you will see. So, one problem. Problem is converting into RTL circuit description. That is called front end. Okay. Again, this RTL circuit description converting into physical design. So, this is called back end. So, since uh, we are involving in both front and back end, so DFT is uh, comes under both front end and back end. Okay. So, next one, what is vector? Vector is called pattern. Vector you can also call pattern. So, if you see in depth, so vectors are used in logical simulation logic simulation patterns are used for fault simulation fault simulation next one so what is d flip flop so d flip flop is a delay flip flop or data flip flop so d flip flop is delay flip flop or data flip flop so we have different types of d flip flop t flip flop d flip flop jk flip flop sr flip flop so, more popular in this all type of flip flops are is D flip flop. D flip flop we are using in, um, is your, your majorly we are using in the, you know, uh, in our industries. Next one, what is net? So, net means wire connection. So, in DFT terminology, net means wire connection. Next, what is net list? Important thing. Net list means group of interconnection between sequential circuits and combinational circuits. So, sequential circuits are flip flops and combinational circuits are logic gates. So, both the interconnection between uh, between these two uh, circuits, sequential circuits and combinational circuits are known as net list. Next one, what is meta stability? So, this is important. So, meta stability, the output of the flop is oscillate between 0 or 1, 0 or 1 that is called meta stability. Whenever fault is there, whenever fault is there in flop, so we will get a meta stability. Once so one, 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 play, one time it will show the 0, one time it will show the 1. So, the, that is called meta stability. So, what is the goal of uh, DFT engineer? So, this is the main thing. So, DFT engineer goal is maximization of test coverage test coverage improvement so we need to improve the test coverage and maximization of fault coverage so fault coverage also we should improve and maximization of number of test patterns test patterns are more we will cover the uh, our test coverage will be more and uh, maximization of sorry minimization of minimization of test time test time should be reduced and uh, test generation efforts should be reduced so, these things we should improve and uh, test time and test effort should be decrease. Okay. So, this is about the uh, goal of uh, DFT engineer. And uh, so, without DFT, there is any techniques, te there is uh, any technique to improve the, uh, any technique you can, you can use to test, you can use to test our design. Yes, we can use, yes. So, we have functional to functional testing. But uh, functional testing it will take more time. So here, so without DFT, is is there any test? Is, is there any techniques to use? Yes, we have techniques. So we, we can test the chip. It make it, it takes much time. It takes much time. It gener it, uh, it generates more test patterns. So more test patterns are more test patterns we have the test time also will be more. So, how we are testing without DFTs? So, we can test using functional testing, primary input and primary output, we have to write the, we have to write the every pattern and we have to test, it will take more time compared to DFT engineer. And what is ATE? What it does? It is a very important thing. After silicon, after manufacturing silicon, so we need to uh, test, we need to test before giving to the consumer, before giving to the uh, client uh, client or customer. So, we have to test the chip. 
So, if you want to test the chip, so we need we need ATE emission. So, ATE stands for automatic test equipment, automatic test equipment. You can also call it as a tester. So, it is a tester. It is a tester. It it stores the test patterns and also it compares available result with golden results. So, you have, we have whatever whatever the results we have get from the ATE, those results we will compare with the golden results means good results, golden results is good results and perfect results. So, it will compare. So, if it is any any deviation is there, it will it will show. It has a pin, it has a pin electronics which maintain the input and output pins of chip. So, so it has a pin electronics, so some pin no, duct, duct will be there, I die will be there. So, in, uh, on the on the die we will place the chip, uh, chip and we will give the input and input and we will see the output and also we will compare with the results with the golden results. So, this is the uh, main thing. So, finally, after chip manufacturing, so we have to test the chip. And what are the factors considered for testing or limitations of testing? So, this is a very important thing. What factors we have to test before uh, going to the test? So, here chip should not burn. We have to see that chip should not burn. Tester should not damage. And whatever the frequency we are giving from the crystal oscillator, that is, that is, that, that should be available. That should be better price. So, uh, if you if you are giving 10 gigahertz, crystal oscillator is not support, so that is wrong. So here crystal oscillator for better price and also it should be support. And the slow clock frequency for shift is uh, maximum 10 megahertz to 200 megahertz. Maximum is 200 megahertz. Sometimes we can also test the chip uh, one by one megahertz also based on our requirement based on our design based on uh, um, customer uh, customer satisfaction so we have to test all the ways okay next one why at limits higher frequencies why at limits higher frequencies so because i test cost only I test cost only at limits to the higher frequency. Higher frequencies means so we should have crystal oscillator is more um, big size, big size so that should support 1 gigahertz, 2 gigahertz. So those uh, frequencies we are testing, so that type of uh, that type of capacity oscillators should have, and also testers should support. So these are the limitations uh, uh, at emission. Have. Suppose if you are testing higher frequencies, chip may be burned. So that is also one consideration, one is a factor. So that is a IT limits higher frequencies. How do you set higher frequencies? Is a very important one. So maximum frequency the tester should support. Maximum frequency the tester should support based on the ATE you will set higher frequency through PLL. PLL uh, we have PLL from uh, first uh, first the circuit will be oscillator oscillator then we will get then we will connect to the PLL. So, PLL what does? So, here we are we are, we are, here we are taking 1 megahertz. So, it may convert into 10 megahertz. So, then it will go to the OCC OCC on chip clock controller. Okay. So, um, how do you set higher frequencies? Higher frequencies, uh, uh, maximum frequencies, tester should support. So, say, tester should not support, then tester will get damaged or chip may be damaged. So, uh, here based on the tester, you will set higher frequency through PLL. Okay. Next, what is the difference between verification and testing? So, important. So, verification verifies 
the correctness of the functionality correctness of the functionality and testing verifies the correctness of the design so whether the design is correct or not okay so this are the difference between verification and testing so testing mainly involves in design verification mainly involves in functionality and uh, how can you convert rtl file to get level netlist so here we have one thing glinks so by using that so we are going to convert so rtl is converted into get level netlist through glink by using test bench it is not it is it is nothing but conversion of verilog or vhdl to get level conversion of uh, verilog or vhdl to get level so why verilog is more popular why verilog is popular than hdl so verilog is like a c c language verilog was designed for simplicity and easy use of for taking a c like c syntax so like c language syntax will use so which makes more uh, more inactive for those familiar with with uh, with popular programming languages so here it is like a c it is a more efficient it is a more familiar and uh, coming coming to the vhdl so vhdl maximum uh, morely it is employs using pascal like syntax pascal pascal syntax will use so which may be may, which might not be familiar to new users uh, so because of that uh, um, verilog is more popular so similar to c language similar to pascal language so similar to c language is verilog and similar to pascal language is uh, hdl okay so what is the difference between rtl and behavioral verilog code rtl rtl code and behavioral verilog code rtl stands for register transfer language which means the code specifies how the data flows between register and logic gates register and logic gates and behavior code other hand describes the behavior of the circuit higher level of uh, abstraction without specifying the details of the hardware implementation without specifying the hardware implementation okay so yeah, these are two, uh, two important uh, things rtl and uh, verilog code okay so thank you if you have any queries uh, uh, queries you can uh you can comment you can comment or otherwise uh, uh you can you can send a mail to the champion electric at gmail.com okay thank you everyone